In this video, we are going to look at URL a bit more closely. So, this is an example of a URL. The first part of it, that is HTTP in this case, is called URL scheme or scheme in simple terms. The scheme indicates how to access the resource. In this case, it's telling that the resource can be accessed using HTTP protocol. If you are thinking that the scheme and the protocol are one and the same thing, you are wrong. Because in this case, the scheme is mail to, which is not a protocol. The format of URL having different schemes could be different. For example, as you see in this case, the format of an HTTP URL is different from the format of a mail to URL. As I had told you earlier, we are going to focus only on HTTP protocol in this whole tutorial and so henceforward we will be looking at the format only of the HTTP URLs. This part of the URL is called the host which identifies the computer where the resource is located. Normally the host would be a name like www.sanjaypatel.name here. But sometimes the host could also be a network IP address, for example 74.125.68.121. Whatever, the job of the host is to uniquely identify the computer where the resource is located. Actually the job of the host is a bit more than just locating the computer where the resource is there. But we shall talk about that later on while we talk about the request headers and for now Let's go to the next part of the URL, which is the port number. The number 80 that you see here is the port number. And what's that? To understand what is a port number and what's its role in a URL, let's first realize that a computer can not only be running a single web server software, but it can be running multiple network applications. For example, it can be running multiple web servers, it can be running multiple email servers, it could be running database servers, and so on. So, when some data comes over the network to this computer, how does the computer know which network application to give the data to? For that, every piece of data coming over the network has got a number attached to it and that is called the port number and in the server side every network application will be listening on one or more port numbers that means whenever some piece of data comes with a particular port number the computer will look at the list of network applications and from that it will find out the particular network application which will be listening on that particular port and then that application will be given this data so in the case of this url the network application listening on port number 80 running in the host www.sanjaypatil.name is supposed to serve this resource so it looks like without a port number a url is not going to work because it will not be able to identify the correct network application inside the host computer but in practice you will normally not see the port number in the urls and why is that that is because port numbers are standardized throughout the world for example 80 is the port number normally all the web servers listen on for the http scheme and 443 is meant for the https scheme so in the absence of the port number 80 is assumed for the http scheme and 443 is assumed for the https scheme that means we can safely remove this colon 80 from our url the next part of the URL, starting from this slash till the last L, is called the URL path. And the web server uses this piece of information to identify the resource. Now, let's look at another example of a URL. In this example, after the URL path, you see that there is a question mark followed by a piece of string, which we call as query string or query in simple terms. The query string is useful for passing some information to the web server. For example, the query string here is indicating the web server to get the resource with some discount offer. Although HTTP specification does not specify any format for the query string, normally it is used for passing a name value pairs to the web server and 
it takes the format name is equal to value ampersand and name is equal to value ampersand and so on okay now let's look at another example of a url in this url we see that there is a hash following the query string and whatever follows the hash is called a fragment which is slash discussions in this case a fragment is like a bookmark in a resource for example an id of an element in an html document the sole purpose of the fragment in a url is to show a particular portion of a resource at the client side for example here in this example if you visit this url through a browser the web server will respond with an html document and then the browser will try to find a portion in it identified by slash discussions and show that to you the fragment is not passed to the web servers because web servers return an entire resource as a single unit and so they do not need the fragment so this was an overview of the format of the url we did not cover some things not commonly seen like username and password in urls and parameters in path segments we shall look at those at appropriate time let's now discuss about url encoding the internet standard has put some restriction on what all characters can be there in a url while all the alphanumeric ascii characters and a few special characters like slash are safe to be in the url there are many other characters which are termed as unsafe by the internet standards and you must encode them for example the space character is unsafe because while printing a url it does not become explicitly visible so if you want to have a space character in a url you should replace that with percent 20 20 being the hexadecimal value of the ascii space character of course you do not have to write code to replace those unsafe characters in urls there would be existing routines to do the encoding and decoding whatever language you use uh, with this let's conclude this video here and in the next video we shall be giving a closer look at the http request and response messages and that's going to be interesting so stay tuned